Today, you join me in the Netherlands for an all access boat tour aboard this extremely capable, long range explorer trawler style yacht. I know that many of you, my subscribers, have been looking forward to having a look around this boat. Before I show you around this really interesting explorer yacht, please don't forget to give the video a like. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's see whether we can get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Sirius is a bespoke 85 foot all ocean long range expedition trawler that can be used for private or commercial use and could also be used as a chase or support vessel for larger yachts. She was built in Holland in 2011. She has a steel hull that varies in thickness from 7 to 10 millimeters. Traditionally, most boats have a single chine creating a simple V shaped hull but Sirius has a multi-chine hull. Instead of that one sharp angle, a multi-chine hull features a series of steps or planes along the sidewall. This design approach offers some interesting advantages. For one, those multiple chines can provide increased initial stability. This means that the boat will resist rolling side to side more readily, especially when at rest or cruising at slower speeds. The chines can also help deflect spray outwards keeping the deck drier when underway. You might have noticed that she also has a box keel, which means that she's got the versatility to handle both coastal adventures and more sheltered waters. The box keel gives her both stability and the ability to explore shallower areas. The fact that this explore yacht also has bilge keels means that thanks also to the skeg, the boat can sit upright and level when the tide goes out, which is vital when the boat is operating in areas with large tidal ranges or if you want to dry out the boat for some basic maintenance. The bilge keels also provide some roll reduction for increased comfort when the boat is stationary. As we head to the stern of Sirius, you will notice that she has a transom door that can be lowered and converted into a swim platform for easy access to the water when you're at anchor. The superstructure is made of aluminium and varies in thickness between 4 to 6 millimetres. Her deck plates are between 5 to 6 millimetres thick. You can start to see now why this boat is designed and built to go anywhere in conditions which would keep most other boats tied up alongside. We are going to jump on board via the port access gate. There is another one on the starboard side. We'll come back and look at this boat deck in a minute, but first I want to take you to the stern of the vessel. From here we get a great view of the wheelhouse and those imposing vertical windows. Speaking of the windows, the frames are made of aluminium and the glass is double glazed and varies in thickness between 10 and 6 millimetres. As we emerge out onto the cockpit, we will head up this ladder so I can show you the view from up here. As well as a great view of the dry stack, we can also see that this is where the aluminium boarding ladder is stowed as well. This would also be a great area to fit some solar panels if you wanted to have some fitted on board the vessel. Let's descend back down into the cockpit area, have a quick look around there, and then we'll head forward via the starboard side deck. As you can see, there's plenty of storage space down here, both on the port and starboard side, and there's some additional storage here as well. We have a Dutch door on the starboard side of the superstructure that leads into the saloon and we'll check that out later on. I must admit I really do like these horizontally split doors as they allow extra ventilation into the boat and are a great way of staying in comms with people on the deck even when the weather is less than ideal. Here we can see some steps that lead up to the starboard access door into the pilot house. On the spacious boat deck we have two tenders including the rib and the rescue sloop. Underneath the tenders you can see this raised area of the deck which is actually a hatch that can be opened up for quick and easy access to the cargo hold. We'll check that out later on in the tour. Next we come to the steel forward mast and spreader which doubles up as a hydraulic crane. This mast can also be lowered as well which helps to reduce the air draft for when you're navigating through inland waterways. The same applies to the main mast as well. In terms of deck gear, this boat has two 160 kg Dehone anchors. There are two chains, both 18 mm thick. One is 160 meters long and the other is 120 meters. They are recovered and deployed using a hydraulic 
2,150 kg than fourth windlass. As we move back along the port side deck, you will notice this opening on the deck that leads into the forward compartment. If an owner wanted to convert that space into a crew cabin, then this access door would allow the crew to get access to the upper deck without having to walk through the main areas of the boat. Next, I'm going to show you around the inside of this stunning boat. What do you think of it so far? Let me know in the comments. And also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I've got some fantastic boats coming up and I cannot wait to share them with you. By hitting the notification bell, you'll always ensure you never miss any of my videos. I can't tell you how nice it is to actually be out of that howling wind uh, and back inside this nice, warm and cosy environment. Obviously, we are in the saloon at the moment. We have this L-shaped seating area over here on the port side. Great place to come, enjoy a meal and take in the view of your surroundings thanks to these large windows that are dotted all around the saloon. Over here we have a wonderful picture of Sirius underway. Absolutely beautiful vessel. She was originally designed on the same sort of concept as a boy laying ship. Uh, and you'll see some of that functionality as we continue with the tour. Uh, if you wanted to get access out onto the deck, then you can of course use this door, which can open straight out onto the deck. Over on the starboard side, we have a seating area here, just a place to come and relax and enjoy a book or a coffee whilst you're underway or planning your next voyage. I like the fact as well, we have a bookcase over here on the port side, a little TV nestled away in there as well. Lots of headroom in here. Of course, if you want to for privacy, you can lower all of the blinds around the boat uh, if you are wanting to bed down for the night. Let's continue forward. Step through here on the port side, we have the galley, the U-shaped galley of all the usual appliances in here. As you can see, we've got lots of storage over here and a big workspace as well. Also got the fiddles on the worktop, something that's quite important when you're gonna be bumping through those heavy seas, something to grab onto. Of course, we've got a window here that we can open up for some additional ventilation. Definitely won't be opening that up today because you get a gale force wind blowing through. Stainless steel stink over here. Of course, got some more drawers. As well as a 78 litre fridge in this galley that comes with a 7.5 litre freezer compartment, there is also another 40 litre fridge and freezer in the technical room as well. And under here, we have a dishwasher. <clears throat> Opposite that, we've got a four burner gas hob as well and underneath there of course we've got an oven extractor fan over there but look i'm not a chef and i think i could probably cook up some decent meals in this space uh, but let me know what you think in the comments again we've got a really decent amount of headroom in here as well i'm six foot four there's probably about another foot and a half of headroom above me and of course you can use this door to close off the galley uh, as and when you need to so over here to the right, we would ascend those stairs and go up to the wheelhouse. We'll check that out in a minute. But first I want to take you down below deck. As well as a Kubola heating system, the interior spaces also benefit from reverse cycle air conditioning that has a 27,300 BTU capacity. Over here on the starboard side, we have what you can call a utility room. Obviously you've got a washer here. But if you wanted to, you can turn this into a captain's cabin as well. Obviously the appliances uh, that were underneath that bench have been taken out. Uh, we've got a porthole over there, look. Making sure you've got natural light coming in. But yeah, if you wanted to turn this into a captain's cabin, then you can of course do that. Uh, one of the things that I like about this boat is that the central heating on this boat is made up of various radiators that we'll see dotted around as well. As you probably noticed, we've got the engine room back aft and we're going there in a minute. That is a really, really impressive engine room, really nice space. But first, let's carry on with the accommodation. So over here on the port side, this is the owner's cabin. A nice, decent sized double bed there. Lots of storage underneath it. As you can see, got a couple of reading lights on that bulkhead and two portholes over here on the hull as well. If you wanted to, you can set up your chair here uh, and use this as a bit of an office space, catch up on your emails, sort out your next investment, whatever it is you want to do. Um, and over here, we've got some more hanging locker space. Let's just open that up to give you an idea 
of how big that is. Look, more than enough space for me, that's for sure. Right, let's spin around. Now, one of the unique things about this boat uh, is at the moment it does have a shared bathroom with the VIP cabin, which is over there. If an owner wanted to, you could partition this off and turn it into two separate bathrooms. Uh, but the owner, when he commissioned the build of this particular boat, wanted a shared bathroom, and that's what we've got. Uh, over here we have the shower, decent sized shower there. And then obviously we've got the toilet uh, and a bidet in there as well. Again, lots of headroom in here. Heated towel rail, decent sized heated towel rail over there. Obviously we've got a his and her sink. Standard salute in the mirror. And look, nice big porthole there as well. Again, lots of storage. We've got some cabinetry over here on the left hand side. Uh, some more underneath the sinks and some more over there on the right hand side as well. Uh, let's continue into the VIP cabin. Again, nice, spacious, functional cabin. Lots of space in here, lots of headroom, and we've got plenty of natural light coming through uh, thanks to these other two portholes as well. Uh, got some reading lights over here on this bulkhead. The cabins can actually be controlled individually in terms of the climate control as well. Again, we've got some more hanging locker space over here and some more space underneath the bed to stow away your gear as well. Let's spin around and take you into the third cabin. This is a twin single in a bunk bed configuration. As you can see, another large porthole there. Controls again for the uh, heating. And there was one of the vents there. So this space can be quickly warmed up or cooled down depending on whereabouts in the world you are. Uh, decent amount of space in here in terms of the bunks as well. You get two adults in here quite easily. And of course, under there, we've got some more storage space as well. If I turn around and head aft, so the guest cabin does have its own bathroom, which is here. Another big radiator there. And this boat actually has a urinal in the bathroom, not something I've seen before. Got the sink over there, lots of space to put all your toiletries. Another big, decent sized porthole there as well. If you move this door, there we go. A nice big shower in there as well. No rain head, but why would you need one when you've got a handheld? Okay, let's open that door, keep that open. Let me now show you a couple of spaces on board this boat that I know many of you are gonna love. At the moment, this, as you can see, is used as a storage area. Essentially, this space is a cargo hold. As we saw earlier in the yacht tour, there is a huge hatch on the deck that can be opened up. So you could, if you wanted to, keep a small, smart-sized vehicle in here, or perhaps a couple of Harley Davidsons. Personally, I would prefer the Harleys, but that's just me. But also, just imagine the amount of dry goods you could stow away down here. With the world the way it is at the moment, this would be the perfect boat to escape from humanity for months or even years. Head off to a far off destination, drop the hook and just wait it out until things calm down a bit. With the boat's 140 litre per hour water maker and a fresh water capacity of 4,400 litres, you could quite easily use this boat as a floating island. She also has a capacity of 1,600 litres of black water as well. For my American viewers, 4,400 litres is about 1,160 gallons, and 1,600 litres is about 423 gallons. If you're wondering why the power cubes and Victron inverters are behind this sheet, then it's because the boat is winterized at the moment. We have another area that is currently being used as a bit of a workshop. So when you're off doing your autonomous cruising, if you've got any minor repairs that you need to do, uh, then you can do it in here. Up here, we have the water maker. Down here, we have the motor for the bow thruster. And if I spin around, here we've got the access ladder that takes us up to the uh, upper deck. And of course, we've got that hatch there that opens up and leads us on to the boat deck. And this used to be used as a spud pole, which is something quite unique to Holland. But basically, inside there, 
There used to be a pole that would go down and basically act as a bit of an anchoring system uh, to keep the boat from moving uh, when you're tied up alongside. Lots of boats built in Holland have spud poles because their canals have soft, muddy bottoms. Spud poles let you moor securely almost anywhere and keep your boat stable, even with changing tides. Over here on the port side, we have another battery bank. So let's spin around, head aft, back through this area, step down. Once again, let's just have a look around. Be interesting to know what you think of this particular setup and what you would do with this area uh, if this was your boat, would you keep it as it is at the moment, as a large storage space, or would you convert it into a cabin? Let me know in the comments. Step back down into the accommodation area through the companionway. And before we go into the engine room, let me take you up into that wheelhouse. When I first saw this wheelhouse, I instantly fell in love with it. It's got a really traditional look and feel to it. Let's come up these steps. And there we go, enter this beautiful space. Look at that. So this wheelhouse is fitted out with a pretty comprehensive suite of Simrad electronics, including the electric compass, depth sounder, log, windset, repeater. Obviously got VHF radios as well, a Simrad GPS, and we've got two Simrad radars as well on this boat. As you can see, we've got two relatively large multifunction displays here. Over there on the right hand side, have the controls for the hydraulics and more of the Simrad displays, including one for the rudder, compass, and wind direction as well. Over on the starboard side, have the throttle control lever uh, for the single engine. She does have a single engine, but she has a Homer engine as well. And we'll check that out in a minute when we go into the engine room. But look at the size of that ship's wheel. And just look at that traditionally styled wheelhouse. Up here as well, this can be opened up so you can get some additional ventilation whilst you're underway. Uh, behind the helm position, have a seating area over there on the port side. Uh, we've got a space here that can be used to set up your paper charts and you can work out where you're going to be going in the world. If you purchased this boat, where would you take her and why? Let me know in the comments below. Back here we have the tank level gauges, automatic horn signals, stabiliser control panel uh, and all the other various switches for the power supply uh, and other controls as well. And over here we've got the switches for the nav lights. But as you can see, if I stand in the middle of this wheelhouse, you get a really good view all the way around the boat. Got an access door over here on the port side that takes us out onto some stairs. Uh, descend those stairs and we're on the port side deck, obviously. If I step up into this seating area, again, like you can see the dry stack there, and you get a really good view on the aft section of the vessel as well. Step over here on the starboard side, and again, look, Check out that view. That window can be opened up as well uh, to allow some additional ventilation in here, as can that one. When it comes to safety, the boat is fitted with lots of equipment, including an EPIRB, port, starboard and rear facing cameras, and a Viking Rescue Pro six person life raft that was last surveyed in 2021. If you need to update any of your safety gear, then feel free to check out my affiliate store on Amazon. You'll find the link pinned in the comments and in the video description. Okay, let's spin around. I'll take you down into the engine room. I'm sure for many of you, this will be one of your favorite parts of the tour. Then back down these steps. Into the utility room. And here we go into this large engine room. So here we have the single Iveco engine. 360 horsepower, uh, which is 264.6 kilowatts, installed in 2009. It gives the boat a maximum speed of 10 knots, and she has a cruising speed of 7.5 knots at 1500 RPM. She consumes around 29 liters of fuel per hour, and rather impressively, it gives her a range of 5,000 nautical miles. 
But due to the tankage configuration on this boat, if an owner wanted to, then you can increase the range of the boat uh, by using the ballast tank in the forepeak as an additional fuel tank if you wanted to. The engine is cooled thanks to a fresh water heat exchanger. And of course, as you already know, she does have a dry exhaust because we saw the dry stack when we were up in the wheelhouse. The boat does have an oversized Exalto HS prop, which really does help to ensure that you get economical cruising at seven and a half knots. The shaft is water lubricated and there are two 400 vac bilge pumps, which also double up as fire pumps as well. Her main gen set comprises of a 16 kVA Northern Lights generator that has 910 running hours, as well as an auxiliary 8.5 kVA generator running off the second Iveco Homer engine. We'll check that out in a second. The main engine has 2,600 hours on it. Let me know in the comments what you think of this engine room so far. This is a secondary engine or Homer engine. This is another diesel Iveco engine. As well as providing the hydraulic power, this Homer engine also acts as an emergency gen set as well. This boat really is about ease of use and ease of maintenance. And I know that many of you, my subscribers, will be pleased to hear that this boat does come with a Homer propulsion system. In terms of her stabilization, this boat has zero speed MATS hydraulic fins. These fins are powered directly by the main engine through a power takeoff system or PTO for short. This means a couple of things. Firstly, she'll get excellent roll reduction, even at rest in a choppy anchorage. Secondly, having the fins powered off the main engine is efficient and reliable, so you can enjoy a smoother ride without worrying about extra generators or power sources. In the spacious lazarette, we can see the top of the steering gear. There are two hydraulic cylinders connected to the fish towel rudder. As you can see, there is plenty of space down here. Personally, I'd probably fit this area out with a couple of dive compressors. In total, there are six watertight compartments and four watertight central closing doors. She is in fact built according to Lloyd's registry standards. If I spin around and head over to the other side of the lazarette and then look up, you'll notice that there is a hatch that leads to the upper deck. This is a great way of getting in and out of the engine room should you happen to have crew on board. But what about her fuel capacity? Well, this boat can carry 13,800 litres of fuel in six tanks. That's around 3,650 US gallons. But if an owner wanted to, then there is enough additional tankage that with a few modifications could carry an additional 4,400 litres of fuel, which is around 1,160 US gallons. With this additional fuel capacity, then I would imagine that the range of this boat could be taken up to around 7,000 nautical miles. So thanks for watching. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Devork Yacht Brokers and to the owner of this beautiful boat for allowing me to come on and show you around. At the time of making and uploading this video, she is currently listed for sale with Devork Yacht Brokers. If you wanna find out more, then of course, I'll leave a link in the video description. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, be sure to get in contact with me. You'll find all my contact details in the link that I'll leave in the video description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. 
If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out the video I made about this Anarche Chuliot called Beliza. And also don't forget to check out the video that I made about Astra. I'll leave a link for both videos in the video description. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel by becoming a member. If you want to join them, then find out more about what channel membership means by clicking on the link that I'll leave in the video description and the link I'll leave in the comments as well.